Hey guys, how's it going? Josh here with a top five video for you guys. We're gonna start doing a top five Tuesdays. How's that sound? Anyways, this is a top five MCU phase two moments. Uh, now it was pretty cool, really hard list to make, I gotta say, because our first movie, do you know the go through is Iron Man 3, and the last one is Ant Man. And it was really hard to go through these movies and really think to yourself, out of all the moments, which one's the coolest? I mean, if I was making a funniest moments thing, obviously, you know, for Ant-Man, I'd be like, hey, man, my, my cousin Ernesto, or, you know, whatever, you know, Luis was saying um, with the stories. I mean, his stories were hilarious. But, I mean, things like that would go in there. And I guess you could say, ole, 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 from Iron Man 3 would go in there, too. But this is a top five moments, really meaning more so kind of like wow moments. I mean, things you didn't expect, things that are really cool. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So number five is the new Avengers team being revealed at the end of Age of Ultron. I mean, this was one of those things where from a comic book fan's perspective, it was awesome because the Avengers in comics have always had a rotating lineup to the point where basically every other hero in the Marvel Universe is or has been an Avenger. Um, I mean, like just to see this in the film universe is pretty impressive. I mean. It's not really something you would expect. Usually they want to keep the same staple cast for the whole franchise. Um, maybe they add one or two people for each film, but that's really it. They don't change the whole team, essentially, minus two members. So the new Avengers team is War Machine, Falcon, Vision, Scarlet Witch, Captain America, and Black Widow, plus or minus Quicksilver, if you count the alternate ending, even though since it's the alternate ending, I don't think it really counts. So um, yeah, it's, just, it's one of those moments where as a comic book fan, it's cool to see the films emulate that. And I mean, it's one of those things also you didn't expect. I mean, most likely if you read leaks, you expected it. But if you did not read any leaks, you definitely did not expect this, you know, to be the way they end the new Avengers film. And then also, you know, it really helps out with how they uh, incorporated a certain new Avenger into Ant-Man without saying any spoilers. So uh, let's move on to number four. And that is Loki as Odin. Now, the reason why this is number four is because this is another one of those cases of moments you did not expect. Um, you know, a way they ended the film. And it's kind of sad, really, because in a film like Thor The Dark World, there is so much you can complain about. But you can't really complain about Loki. Um, they just handle him really well. And I mean, I like the way they ended off with him because when Freya died, I mean, it was just one of those things that it felt like Loki's character kind of snapped at that moment. And I feel like this is kind of the repercussion of him just, you know, taking the kid gloves off and basically taking shit out uh, or taking care of shit, I should say. So, I mean, I'm really happy that they did this. This whole Loki is Odin, Loki's, you know, pretending to be Odin kind of thing, because as far as we're concerned, Loki killed Odin and is impersonating Odin and nobody's the wiser. And that not only cements Loki as one of the most cunning villains of the MCU, but also one of the most dangerous. Because Odin is not a pushover. Like, yes, he is old, but he's also Odin, and he's respected so heavily for a reason. So, um, yeah, this is a pretty cool moment, I gotta say. At least I thought it was a pretty cool moment. And let's get on to number three, which is more of a surprising moment, I would say, definitely. And that's Vision lifting Thor's hammer more near. Now, if you were in a theater watching Avengers Age of Ultron, I can bet you somebody in the theater, if not everyone during the first showing, gasped. I mean, when I was in the theater, everyone was like, oh, when, you know, Vision lifted the hammer. And I mean, it's just one of those things that, you know, from the first Thor movie, they were teasing people trying to lift the hammer, they couldn't do it. People tried moving the hammer, they couldn't do it. And then finally, they do it. And it's also really cool because it's part of, you know, Vision's introduction to the Avengers team. Which, you know, obviously they need something to make him seem, you know, friendly, I guess you could say. Not really an enemy. But, uh, you know, it's just really cool to see this. And uh, hopefully the next character to do something like this is Beta Ray Bill. Uh, keep your fingers crossed. He's in Thor Ragnarok. But um, number two, let's get on to it. And that is Infinity Stones 101. That's what me and CJ joking call it. And uh, that's when the Collector basically gave a crash, crash course on the Infinity Stones. I mean, man oh man oh man, did this dude basically just, not really exposition, but he pretty much answered a lot of things people were um, wondering about, like, hey, is this thing Infinity Stone? Hey, is this thing Infinity Stone? Yes, those things are Infinity Stones after all, I guess. 
Um, and it was just really cool to see also because this is one of those moments where it's like deep Marvel mythology kind of. I mean, yes, Infinity Stones are much more common knowledge now due to the MCU, but I mean, just in general, the fact that they took time to go into them was very nice. Uh, especially because they're going to be such a you know an integral thing in phase three definitely and then also another thing that really made this moment all that much better and made it top two um number two on the top five basically is the fact that the celestials are introduced now obviously nowhere is the head of a celestial but the fact that they actually showed us a living celestial was awesome i mean if you know anything about them you know they're very deeply rooted in the marvel history um both the cosmic Marvel history and the Earthbound Marvel history. So it's just, it's one of those things where you don't expect them to actually show them, but the fact they did, it's just a testament to, I guess, James Gunn, and also just the Marvel films, that they're so confident in themselves, and they've done so much that they can do stuff like this. Like, this is like if the Green Lantern films took time to literally go through all the entities and show those entities, including the white entity that's buried in Earth. So, um, yeah, that's just, it was a really cool moment. And let's get into number one, shall we? Which is S.H.I.E.L.D. really being Hydra. Now, the reason why this is number one and not number two, three, four, five is because this basically changed everything. I mean, they always want to say, oh, this changes everything. But the reveal that Hydra is really S.H.I.E.L.D. is something that came out of left field. No one expected it whatsoever. So it props out to Marvel for being able to keep a secret, but it became a meme. You know, it helped Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. really revitalize itself to a lot of people. Also, at the same time, it brought to light a lot of things that happened in the other movies so far. I mean, the Senator trying to take the Iron Man armor. He was Hydra. You know, a bunch of other things. The assassination of, you know, Howard Stark. Just all these things in general. You know, certain mysterious things S.H.I.E.L.D. did. It was because of Hydra. Hydra was in S.H.I.E.L.D. Hydra was basically running S.H.I.E.L.D. And it was just something that, you know, it changed everything. And it's just the way they did it, you can't help but make this number one moment. Um, just because of how big it became. Uh, so, you know, with that being said, that's it for our top five list. Hope you guys enjoyed them. If you have any disagreements, comment below letting us know. And if you have any suggestions for more top fives, let us know. Next Tuesday's top five will be top five fanboy uh, fights. So uh, let's see, uh, I guess you guys will see what I come up with. And without further ado, it's Josh. I'll see you guys later.